Hi all, I have another fascinating game of Leela Chess. This is against Shredder 13 in the 2018 Chess Comp Blitz Battle, which was which is a five minute with two second increment time control. Let's have a look. D4 from Leela. We have D5 from Shredder, C4, E6. Pretty classical so far. Knight F3, and now C6, Bishop G5. Bishop e7, e3, and now usually knight bd7 is played here. For example, this has been seen quite a bit before, this position. Here, Shredder plays h6, and the bishop retreats to f4, black castles. And now Leela plays queen c2, so she hasn't moved uh, the bishop, maybe waiting for d takes c4, it seems. Or is there another intention here? After knight bd7, guess what Leela plays in this position? If I give you five seconds to pause the video. Okay. It's a very rare bird move, actually. You might think this is quite logical, g4. It seems this, this hasn't been played by uh, many top players in this position. Quite often rook d1 is played here. For example, this position is uh, more common. So g4, interesting. D takes c4 was played. Uh, another alternative here, rook e8, g5, has been seen before in a game. Quite a strong player with white back in 2012. Rojas, 2-3-7-5 against Martinez. That ended in a win for white, actually. So that's one of the rare uh, over-the-board stem games here. Uh, but this is d takes c4, so we're going quickly on a unique path. Uh, we have now rook g1, knight d5, and Leela forces through the activation of this rook. Uh, this is like a hallmark of Leela. Is she being totally optimistic? Is it all saying that this really works, this kind of thing? But this setting up this guarantee for an active rook uh, is the basis of later coordinating intensifying pressure alignment of pieces or, or taking away king escape squares it is directed at the opponent's king so and it could be a combination of both those aspects so we have knight takes f4 here and i mean alternatives if you want to look at this the pgn uh it's in this in the pinned comments of this video hg knight takes g5 threatens a checkmate this is quite dangerous with the queen on c2 so say bishop takes bishop takes this position is quite dangerous actually for black it seems white can even give up that light square bishop and have a quite a good lockdown here on the dark squares this is a typical scenario where white's really got a good grip on the position and this should this should be a very very nice advantage there's even things like bishop e7 tactically in this line for example, this is just is going to be ending up winning Black Queen in a lot of variations. So this is a very critical juncture. Uh, if we look at Bishop takes G5 for a moment, then taking here Bishop takes again. This is very pleasant indeed. This scenario again. This is even more of a lockdown on the dark squares. Why can even just play on the Queen side and Bishop's dominating on the dark squares? Uh, H5 trying to just keep things closed. Again, white would be in the driving seat here and can push through g6, form pawn, and that, that would be a big advantage to white. So yeah, it seems as though this is uh, very well justified. This is a big advantage here. Uh, this whole concept seems justified. So knight takes f4 uh, seems as though this is the reason this wouldn't be played because this looks like a wreck. Doesn't it? Doesn't it look like a train wreck if e takes f4 and black can actually close up with h5 and say, so what? This is indeed uh, no guarantee of the rook being activated at the moment. Um, it's behind, it's shielded behind its own pawn. And what what does a boy actually do here? Uh, this, this seems pleasant enough for black. For example, here, uh, there might even. Yeah, white, white would have a small edge there only. But, <laughs> but, the follow-up is everything in chess to prove the worth of a concept. 
So after taking on F4, guess what Leela plays? If I give you five seconds to pause the video here. Okay, a brilliant follow up. G takes H6, so a temporary peace sack. Now the knight stumbles back to protect g7 to lend support to g7 to try and neutralize this g file. Uh, you might want to check out knight d3. Let's check out knight d3 together here instead. Uh, or knight g6. Let's check out a few. Knight g6 runs into rook takes g6, crashing through on g6. h7 check is embarrassing because that'll be winning the rook if king h8, queen takes. Uh, so that's that's nasty. Uh, so, or here is even worse, <laughs> King F8 with his Queen, and it's checkmate. Uh, so that's no good. G6 here, taking with the threat of Rook takes G6, for example. Uh, if that's parried, then this position is still very, very strong for White. White should have a nice advantage here, because G6 is very vulnerable there could be a build up on g6 here and even though uh yeah it just looks very very strong this build up it should be a massive advantage for white crashing through like this for example uh causing carnage winning material so g6 doesn't really work out now let's look at knight d3 check trying to get this light square bishop well it doesn't matter because g6 here bang rook takes g6 and then if fg then that form pawn is checkmating uh, so say after rook takes g6 king h8 rook g7 here this position is intriguing even though blacks a piece up we do get elements of alignment intensifying pressure on the g file and cutting out king escape squares or a combination of both so for example alignment and now taking away uh, escape squares or like this for example and now there's big mating threats emerging and it causes basically a winning material for example like this check and then winning the queen and then actually things like this happen so the, the pieces aren't particularly uh, solid protecting each other in some of these lines as well so it seems knight h5 is sensible so is Leela just gambling here with this peace sacrifice or is there something really deep about this position we have h takes g7 and now knight takes g7 is played on rook e8 this position with that pawn on g7 if it should be taken really because if b5 then bang bishop takes e6 and this gets really nasty for example like this bang rook takes g7 and then the other rook comes in for example that loses that rook and if rook g8 then check but, and and this is just winning material with interest winning that material with interest so there's a lot of lines here which are pretty devastating so knight takes and Lil is getting this opposite side castling very exciting action-packed game I don't think Lila could play in a more exciting game for us youtubers to appreciate <laughs> she's really generating huge interest in what was a queen's game it declined <laughs> so knight b6 which was supposed to be solid for black but now it seems hack attack time queen e4 was played f5 queen f4 so rook f6 so can black actually defend this okay black is uh, an extra piece up bishop e2 but we do have this activation of the rook which leads to beautiful things so knight d5 queen g5 threatening mate on g7 that's protected queen h6 knight takes and this does fracture white's pawns a bit on the queen side uh, but now knight g5 queen a5 is played here counter attacking on the queen side on bishop takes g5 rook takes this position an intensification of pressure uh, this uh, is possible here and it, and black is running out of checks actually um, so this is just not very pleasant at all uh, yeah that that's just hopeless it's just gonna be mating black and you might have observed by the way in this variation the Queen coming back to f8 as a sort of thing going on roundabout here you might have thought Queen f8 
I think the snag is rook h5. <laughs> the, the queen's actually, yeah, queen h8 checkmate there. So these lines are really, really promising. So in the game, we have queen a5, not yet bishop takes g5. But now we do sort of transpose a bit into the same ideas. And in fact, so check here. And black gets in this check, check, queen a5. And it's here, actually, white could have, Leela could have actually just done this, done this alignment and let black have the check on c3. For example, this, we run into a similar ideas in what we've just previously seen, where black really is running out of checks and just getting slaughtered then on the king's side. Uh, this is absolute slaughter time, for example, like that. So, uh, King b2, yeah, but Leela decides a more conservative approach of rook c1. So if we haven't got alignment, what have we got? Well, as I mentioned, the two beautiful fruits of active rooks uh, could lead to like the, the closing of escape squares of the opponent's king in, in the formation of a mating net. And this actually uh, is beautifully demonstrated here uh, by Leela as an alternative, actually, to just simply piling up the pressure because eventually after a few more checks bishop h5 which has the idea of plonking the bishop on g6 where it covers key escape squares of the king and therefore makes the whole queen h7 pardon me makes the whole queen h7 much more effective so this is the key move bishop h5 so it doesn't have to be just piling crudely on the g file a bit of sophistication here we have rook b7 on rook e7 bishop g6 we can see the full, the full power of power of this approach e4 is a very cute move here lending support for the c1 rook so queen a3 isn't so dangerous now in these lines after rook g3 that's covering c3 as well as the c1 square so here f4 and white can actually crash through now with an attack like this for example rook e1 and you see that c3 is covered and it doesn't matter about the rook here or anything because of bishop e4 checkmate so there's some very very beautiful alternative contingency ideas not just piling the rooks and queens on on queen on the g file so we have uh, rook b7 played in this position uh now bishop g6 so keeping an eye on this escape square so king f8 and now this is intriguing because uh, a guaranteed activation now across this rank is of great interest to Leela to not have these pawns hanging around and we see guess what move we see here bang bishop takes f5 so opening up the sixth rank believe it or not this actually adds even more spice to the position if we leave this pawn on e6 with queen h8 check this it seems black can sort of try and run a bit at least uh you know the game would last a bit longer basically but this is still the mechanism still there to open up the sixth rank to add more spice and more alignment again and more mating nets again for example queen d6 checkmate so yeah, the rook mechanics of Leela activating rooks is absolutely superb for what fruit it gives all the time, whether it's rows or files. So bishop takes f5, opening up you know lateral action. We have rook f7 here. On e takes f5 here. Check. This is uh, pretty devastating. For example, like this. Bang. Checkmate. So rook f7, we have bishop g6 again, queen a3, the king comes to protect, king e7, uh, black loses the exchange, and this means that end games now are generally be nice for white the exchange up. Uh, so this is a bit of a mauling now, and any end game now is just absolutely winning. So Leela doesn't mind the exchange of queens, it's the exchange up. She's uh, won enough material to and has so many past pawns now as well so this is this is going to be technique yeah she doesn't mind about the rook on f6 this yeah it's just enough to just win multiple ways 
now but the h pawn is pushed okay that rooks attacked with bishop d5 that's moved and it's just a matter of managing the counterplay a bit so we see yeah that uh, fractures black's pawns a bit more on the queen side weakening them so a nice technique here or is it going to be trolling so let's see yeah the game carries on quite a bit here c4 that gets control of a few things like the e4 square coming up so now yeah black's getting in real trouble here that h pawn is extremely dangerous yep e4 this is those two pawns on coming through as well now here yeah it looks as though black's king is also in trouble it's not just about the h pawn anymore bang bishop takes a4 yep this looks absolutely it's all over on the shouting yeah that's just desperate queening <laughs> yep and check mate so again wonderful attacking intuitive chess going into a line which just hasn't been seen at a high level before no one's really followed up this continuation with such imagination and faith basically <laughs> the, the huge pressure which can be exerted as well as taking away escape squares is is the fruit of uh, the peace sacrifice uh, which was propelled by the pawn sacrifice prior to that so if you enjoyed this game found it instructive uh, please click on the top left box which should appear shortly and you can become a member at chessworld.net which is my site and play other youtubers with my reference code 1053 you can also uh, check out the analysis of these games on the improve menu learn from the masters so any analysis updates to this game as well in the future or other games yeah check those out as well okay comments questions like share sub and subscribes much appreciated uh, okay thank you very much cheers then